he was holding a noose in his hand. And as I approached, he looked up at me, his eyes dark and foreboding. He leaned in close and whispered, Do you know why they call me the hangman? Welcome. It was a dark and stormy night. The kind of night that made me want to stay inside and never venture out. But I had to work. And so I found myself walking down the deserted streets towards my office. The rain pounded against my umbrella, making it difficult to see where I was going. As I walked, I heard a sound that sent a chill down my spine. It was the sound of a rope creaking in the wind. The sound of something swinging back and forth. I turned towards the source of the sound and I saw a figure standing in the shadows. It was hard to make out in the darkness, but as I got closer, I could see that it was a man dressed in old-fashioned clothes. He was holding a noose in his hand, and as I approached, he looked up at me, his eyes dark and foreboding. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as he spoke in a voice that seemed to come from another time. Welcome, Welcome my, my friend, friend, he said. I've, I've been, been waiting, waiting for, for you. you. I froze in fear as he ordered me to come closer. I tried to turn and run, but my legs felt heavy, as if they were rooted to the ground. The hangman took a step closer, his breath hot on my face. I could see his rotting teeth and the maggots that crawled in and out of his decaying flesh. He leaned in close and whispered, Do you know why they call me the hangman? I couldn't speak, couldn't move. I was trapped, a prisoner in my own body. The hangman chuckled, his eyes gleaming with malice. I'm going to show you, he said. And before I knew it, he had slipped the noose over my head. I struggled, but it was no use. The noose tightened around my neck, cutting off my air supply. I could feel myself gasping for breath, my vision growing dim. In my last moments, I saw the hangman's face, contorted in a grotesque smile, his eyes glowing with an unholy light. And then everything went black. When I woke up, I was in my own bed, gasping for air. It was just a nightmare, I told myself. Just a bad dream. It was the same nightmare again. The one where the hangman comes for me. I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that was consuming me, but I couldn't. It had been years since I committed the crime, but the guilt and the shame never left me. And now it seemed the hangman had come to collect. I was in desperate need of money and I did something awful. That's when the nightmare started. Every night I would dream about the people who I had affected by my actions. I could see the disappointment in my family's eyes and I could hear the whispers of my friends as they talked about me behind my back. One night, I woke up to the sound of a rope creaking outside my window. I lived on the top floor of an apartment building, so I knew it couldn't be a person. I slowly walked over to the window and looked outside. That's when I saw him, 
the hangman. He was hanging from a tree, his eyes locked onto mine. I could feel the weight of his stare, and I knew he was there for me. After that night, I would see him everywhere, in my dreams, on the street, even in my own reflection. He was a constant reminder of my past, and I knew that I deserved whatever punishment he had in store for me. I shook my head. I decided to get up and walk to the bathroom to splash some water on my face. Maybe that would help calm me down and fall back asleep. As I stood in front of the mirror, I froze. I saw bruises around my neck, as if I had really been strangled by a noose. And in the back of my mind, I could still hear the hangman's voice whispering his terrible secrets. It's late. I'm about to fall asleep in front of the TV. I try to keep my eyes open, but the soft glow from the screen is making it hard to stay awake. My mind is starting to wander when I hear a strange sound. I open my eyes. Am I just imagining it or where did the sound come from? I stand up and walk over to the window. The sound is coming from outside my house. I look out towards the river. It's too dark to see. I walk over to my front door, put on a jacket and walk outside. The sound grows louder. It almost sounds as if someone is crying. Hello? Someone there? No response. I follow the sound to the edge of the river. Hello? I don't know why, but I start to feel very uneasy. As if I should turn around and run back to the house. I start backing towards the house again, when I see something moving. It's a woman. She's wearing a long, flowing white dress, and she's crying uncontrollably. I can't see her face, but I feel her sorrow and pain. I approach her. Are you okay? What happened? Do you need help? But as I get closer, the crying stops, and she turns to face me. And that's when I see her grotesque face with two holes where the eye should be. She reaches out towards me, her hand cold as ice. I try to back away, but I can't move. It's like I'm frozen in place. She whispers something, but I can't understand her. All I know is that I have to leave. Get away from me. Leave me alone. I manage to break free from her grip and run as fast as I can back to my house. Growing up in Mexico, I have always heard stories about La Llorona. La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, is a famous legend in Latin American folklore. La Llorona was a woman who drowned her children in a river out of anger and jealousy over her husband's infidelity. After realizing what she had done, she drowned herself as well. La Llorona is said to be a vengeful spirit who haunts rivers and other bodies of water, weeping and searching for her lost children. Some say that if you hear her cries, it's a sign that she's near and that bad luck or tragedy may befall you. My grandmother used to warn me about her, saying that if I didn't behave, 
La Llorona would come and take me away, but I never believed her. I tried to calm down. I lock my door and walk inside the hallway. Should I call the police? No, they wouldn't believe me. But I should tell Mike, my husband, who's sleeping upstairs. And I should also make sure that I didn't scare Theo by all the noises I made. My son is two years old, but is already scared of monsters under his bed. Wait. My heart sinks to my stomach. Theo. I don't have time to think. I sprint up the stairs and kick the door open. The tears starts forming in my eyes as I scream for Mike to wake up. I fall to my knees as I feel a cold breeze from the open window. The moon lights up the whole room and the empty crib where my son should be sleeping. La Llorona found what she was looking for. I always knew about the legend of the man in the fields. Growing up, my friends and I would often tell ghost stories around the campfire. And the man in the fields was one of our favorites. It's been many years since. I'm sitting in my bedroom. I bought this house five years ago. It's a cute cottage located on a huge field. However, I am in debt. I have tried to find a job and even get a loan, but so far I have been unsuccessful. One night, I started thinking about the old children's story about the man in the fields. At this point, what's there to lose? Maybe I should try it. The man in the fields is a major challenge to anyone wishing to extend their lifespan or their financial status for a year. The man in the fields can be summoned any time after 9pm, as long as the sun has set. However, the man in the fields is a very sadistic creature, but those who complete the ritual without looking at him will be rewarded. It's 2 a.m. I put on my jacket and walk outside. It's freezing outside and it's very dark. I'm walking out into the open field. I stop and look out into the darkness. I whisper. Who will scare the crows away? Who will scare the crows away? Who will scare the crows away? Maybe this is a bad idea. Who will scare the crows away? Who will scare the crows away? Who will scare the crows away? I'm starting to get nervous. Who will scare the crows away? I listen. Behind me, I hear something move. And then someone leans in close behind me and whisper in my ear. That's not your biggest problem. The man in the fields. Shocked, I start returning to my cottage. I never believed it would work. I'm terrified, but I have to perform the ritual now. I walk inside and everything has been opened. My doors, my bags, even my jewelry box. I lock the front door and then run over to my desk. My grandmother's crucifix must be in here. I find it and grab it. I take the crucifix into a room with only one door. I close the door and leave the crucifix there. This is now my safe room in case the ritual goes wrong. My goal now is to close everything that has been opened within an hour. This sounds easy in description, 
but think about it. Every bag, every door, every window, every container in the house has just been opened. The challenge isn't closing them, it's remembering them all. I must lock every open item in the house in precisely an hour. At no point can I look into the yard at the man in the fields. If I do, he will know. Something moves behind me. I turn around and almost faint when I see a man in the corner. This must be the herald. Throughout the ritual, as I lock every item that has been opened, I will see this man dressed in a farmer's overall with an ash grey complexion to his face. He is not the man in the fields. He is just making sure that I am following the ritual's rules. I try to ignore the man and start locking items. All of a sudden, I hear a lightning strike outside the cottage and the entire sky is lit up. I look outside for only a second and by mistake I also glance at the horrifying creature standing in the fields. Within a blink of an eye, the man in the fields has already sprinted up to my cottage. I must get to my safe room. I run. No time to think. I hear him breaking a window behind me. Five meters. Four. Three. Something grabs my arm. No. My blood runs cold. The last thing I hear is a quiet, nightmarish giggle. I caught you.